hi guys hope you're all doing well welcome back to our channel and in this video i'm going to talk about azure information protection policies now if you're watching the series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about azure information protection labels how to configure settings that are moreover related to labels how to define conditions on behalf of which a document or email will get automatically classified whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing how to create azure information protection policy how to add different labels to a particular policy or how to do scoped or departmental deployment now since this will be a complete lab demo session so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to my browser where i have signed in as global admin and now i'm going to click on azure information protection now this is something which I have addressed in the previous video as well that the moment you will click on Azure information protection it will default to labels section and this is the label which we have created in our previous video but now we'll click on policies and we'll check what all options are there what all can be customized and how to create a new policy. Now, the moment Azure Information Protection gets enabled for any particular tenant, there is a policy which is created by default. And since this policy is scoped for all the users by default and you cannot customize the setting, that's the reason this policy is named as Global Policy. So the first option was name, then it has description and the section or the settings from where you scope a policy to a particular user is actually being grayed out. This simply means that this assignment part cannot be customized for this particular policy. Now, the next section is the section from where you're going to choose labels that you should scope for a particular policy. Now, how does it work in a nutshell that it's your AIP client on the device that queries the policy, gets the dump of all the labels and get it displayed at the label bar of your application. Now, if I open new mail or if I click on new email as you can see I'm getting these four options because these four labels are currently in scope of my global policy if I add any new label or if I remove any new label the respective changes will be replicated to my application now this is moreover related to the labels and if I click on add or remove labels you can see I'm getting the new label which we just created in our previous video now the next section is title and it says sensitivity and then there is a tooltip let's exactly check where we get this information on the client and here exactly you can customize the tooltip or this sensitivity title whatever you want the next section is select the default label now what does this mean that out of all the labels which you are going to scope for a particular policy you can choose one label to be the default label of email or document now what do i mean by this that whenever a user clicks on new mail you can see that this email is already being classified as public now the reason behind this because my policy says that public should be the default label the same thing will get applied to documents as well so in a nutshell if the user tries to create a document that will also get by default labeled as public and the fact is that all the labels that are as of now in scope for your policy you can choose any one of them so we have personal public general and confidential if you want you can select any of these four and that label will get automatically applied whenever a new email or a document is created by a particular user the next option is send logging data to azure information protection analytics this is something which i will cover in a different video but just to let you know that this require azure log analytics to be in place so that you know all the data or all the logs can be saved and the section from where you will be viewing all this information is this section all documents and emails must have a label applied that means a user cannot send a document which is not labeled 
or a user cannot save a document which is not labeled. User must provide a justification to set a lower classification label, remove a label or remove a protection. Now, what does this actually mean that let's say depending upon the keywords that exist in an email or depending upon the conditions that you have defined, an email has been labeled as confidential. But as a user, I'm trying to choose any other label which doesn't have any protection. Let's say confidential has a protection because do not forward is already added. But now let's say I try to change this and I'm going to choose a label which doesn't have any protection. In this case, as a user, I have to provide a particular justification of all the reason why I'm doing this. But for sure, you can either choose to enable this option or you can just click on off and then the user will not get that particular prompt. For email messages with attachment, apply a label that matches the highest classification of those attachments. Now think about a scenario wherein you have a user and he's trying to send an email and that doesn't have any confidential keywords. That means something random or normal text or normal interactions are going on with the particular email. But when user attaches a document in this email, which is let's say confidential, which has the protection also applied, then in that case, the labeling of this particular email or the classification of this particular email will automatically be changed to confidential because if we compare public and confidential, confidential has more restrictive settings applied. So in this case, whatever the highest classification in terms of restriction available for a particular attachment that will get applied to the particular email. The next option is display the information protection bar in Office apps, which we already know. Add the do not forward button in the Outlook ribbon. If you want, you can enable or disable this and then make the custom permission option available for the users. These are all the options which we have already seen. Now, in a nutshell, these are all the settings that can be done for a particular policy. Now, let's talk about how to create a custom or scoped policy. So for that, you can click on add a new policy and then you can give your name. Let's say I am naming it as finance and I'm typing this is test description in the description section. Now, this option when we were checking global policy was actually grayed out because global policy is targeted for all the users. But here exactly you can target to which user this policy should be available. Now scoped policies are going to include all the additional labels that you're going to add apart from global policy. So as of now, these four labels are available in the global policy. But if I want, I can add any of the additional labels. So let's say there is a team finance team that creates documents and let's hypothetically assume that all the documents that they are going to create will be sensitive documents. So what I'll do is I'll get one more label applied for their policy. And then from here, I can actually change that if any finance department user, which is let's say IDP is trying to sign into any of the office app, then the default label that should be applied in this case should be AIP label, the label which we have just created. And that's the only difference in terms of scoping users and scoping all the labels. Now, when I was talking about some of the very basics uh, related to AIP, in that video, I have shown a particular deck wherein you can add or remove labels. But in a nutshell, scoped policies are going to inherit all the labels available in global policy. That representation was just to show you guys how exactly everything works. So now since we have two policies, one is global and one is finance. And for finance policy, we have a specific targeted user called IDP. Now the next step is to check how exactly the difference will be when it comes to the user experience. And that's exactly what I'm going to cover in our next video.
So let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed. We have discussed about how to create an Azure information protection policy, how to add labels and how to get the labels scoped to different set of users. In the next video, we'll proceed with the installation of AIP client and see what the difference a user will experience when it has been scoped for different policies. So if you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.